Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today's tutorial we're going to be setting up a character controller for this character right here. And we're going to discuss of course how we did it and how you're going to need to set up your own player. Uh, and of course we're going to just keep moving on with this tutorial series on how to actually get a proper character set up. Now I did do this series a long time ago but I found a lot of optimization issues with that uh, previous video. Um, but here's what we have now. So we have no t actual turning, but we do have the ability to be able to move our character forward, uh, backwards, we're able to run forward and backwards, left and right. Uh, so it's super awesome, and it's actually very smooth. So uh, without further ado, let's go and get started. Now to begin with, uh, we're actually going to need to set up a base setup for our uh, character. So we're going to actually disable this temporarily. And the first thing we want to do for our character is create a 3D object. So head over to your hierarchy. Go over to 3D object and select a capsule. From there, you can head over here to the inspector. Select this little cog and select reset. Now we're going to rename this as player. We're going to go over to tag and we're going to also select that as player. Now the position of this is automatically set at zero and as a capsule it's set up as too high automatically. Uh, so we're going to set the position of the Y to one. We're also going to disable the mesh renderer and we're going to right click on the player in the hierarchy again and we're going to select create empty. Now this is going to be our graphics holder so we're going to name this as graphics. Perfect. Now we want the graphics to be on the ground. We don't want it to actually be in the middle of the player. Uh, the main reason for this is because most character objects that you import are going to have the uh, axis point at the feet. Uh, so we're going to change the Y axis to a negative one and that will put it on the ground for us. The next thing we want to do is create a new empty game object. We're going to call this camera center point. Now we're going to save this individual camera uh, script for the next tutorial. We're not going to actually use it for this tutorial, but we're going to use it as a reference point anyway for now. Uh, so yeah. Alright, so that's really all we need for our character. Uh, it's just these three objects. Now, you do need to import your own character, and of course the animations for these characters. And I might do a video for that individually next time. I know that uh, I did a pr vi previous video and I tried to compile it all together and it just was too much. So I'll do an individual video on how to get uh, characters from Mixmo and animations as well. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to simply grab our 3D model and we're going to drop it onto our graphics. Now it should automatically uh, fit correctly. If it's not, you can simply adjust it inside the uh, inspector. And from here, we're going to create a animator controller. So you're going to right click inside the uh, project panel and you're going to find create and then select animator controller. Now with this animator controller, you can name it player, you can name it whatever you want to call it. It's up to you. And inside here, we're going to create a sub state or we're going to create a state and go over to new blend tree. Now blend trees are super cool because it allows us to be able to add multiple animations to the same motion and it's controlled by a float value. And we'll get more into that in a second. So once you have your animator open, you're going to make sure that you set up two floats. So if you don't know how to add parameters, simply select this parameter tab, then press this plus icon and you're going to select float. You're going to name the first one speed and you're going to name the second one direction. So once you have your motion um, blend state set up, you're going to double click inside there and it's going to give you an empty one of these. Uh, you're going to change the blend type to 2D freeform directional. Uh, you're also going to add in these individual animation states. So you can just simply press plus, add motion or new blend tree. It's up to you. And Right here, as you can see, we have running, walking, idle, uh, walking, running, and of course, our right strafe, left, or right strafe, walk, left strafe, walk, and left strafe, run. Um, these are going to be set as such. So if we take a look at the first one, uh, we can see we have our direction as our first perimeter and our speed as our second. 
So this is going to stand as our direction is our x-axis and our speed is our y-axis. So whenever our running or whenever we want to be running, we're going to set our position of y at 1. Keep in mind that your animation speeds will only be calculated at a negative 1, 0, and 1. So anywhere between those numbers, it will calculate. But anything above those numbers, like 2, 4, 8, or negative 8, negative 2, it's not going to add those to the animation state. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so once you have this set up, uh, similar to this, you're going to, of course, make sure that you get your animations inside there. So you can just simply open up your animation files and simply click and drag onto this and boom, you will have it all set up. You can even test it by pressing play, then grabbing this red dot and being able to move and see if your character is moving properly. Make sure that you do have your animations that are supposed to loop set to loop time and loop pose as well. Okay, so once you have your animator controller set up, you're going to grab your character so your AJ guy or whoever your mix and go character is or your unity character whatever character you have you're going to simply drag your player animator or whatever your animator was called onto that animator okay cool so we now have our actual character set up inside of our scene now we're going to cover our script so this script is actually an all-round script I called it player control I will have it inside the description below it, or not really the des description, but we'll have it inside the comment section below. Uh, but all we're going to do is we're going to simply drag this onto our player, uh, set up our walk speed as 2, we're going to set up our run speed as 4, we're going to set up our transition time as 8, and that's it. Now you may notice that we added a rigid body automatically. Now the reason why we have this is we actually have set this up inside the script, and I'm going to cover that in a second. Make sure that you also freeze the rotations on this rigid body. Okay, so here is our uh, script for our player controller. So as you can see at the top, we're going to say require component type of rigid body. This will not be inside the comment section below, so make sure that you add that. Now we also have this header. This is just, just going to say that this is the locomotion aspects of our um, character controller. We have a walk speed, we have a run speed, and we have a speed. Uh, we also have a transition time. These are all set to public floats except for our speed, which is set to private. Next, we have a public bool called is sprinting. This is going to determine if we are sprinting or not, and we'll change our animations if it is. We also are grabbing two components. We have a rigid body. We're going to call it RB. And we have an animator. We're going to call that anim. Underneath our void start function, we're going to grab our rigid body by saying RB is equal to get component on this game object and find our rigid body. Now for our animator, on the other hand, we're going to be searching our children because if we take a look inside Unity at our player object, right, it actually does not have any form of animator on it. So we want to be able to grab this character's animator so we're going to be searching through all the children to find that animator so that's why we use the get component in children animator keep in mind if you have multiple animations you may want to be more spe specific by adding a public animator instead okay we also have our speed is equal to walk speed um, that way we automatically have a set speed for this i already put in a fail safe below as well but that's just in case. All right, so underneath our void update function, we have a region set up for locomotion. If you don't know what regions are, they're simply, I guess you could say organization tools that C Sharp provides. It's really cool to use as well, um, but I'm gonna leave these open whenever you ha re are reading the script inside the comment section. So under our motion section, we have a typical setup that we always use. We have var x is equal to getting our axis of horizontal. We're going to multiply it by speed and then multiply it by time dot delta time. We're going to copy that same function, except we're going to be using the vertical axis on the z uh, variable. Then we're going to set our transform dot translate. We're going to choose our x and our z, and that's it. 
underneath our sprint function on the other hand we have the getting key of our left shift so we're going to be grabbing our left shift key so anytime somebody presses that we're going to set is sprinting is equal to true we're going to set our speed is equal to run speed otherwise if speed is not equal to walk speed then we're going to be reversing this so we're going to set is sprinting is equal to false and speed is equal to walk speed you know pretty typical of a sprint script now our animator is actually going to be uh, very special because I actually set this up a, a little while ago and it actually took a little bit of time to work on um, but typically we're going to be covering our function first and then we'll hop into this so this right here is a void that I created called axis animation update the first thing we have is a string called axis name uh, this is going to be grabbed up here as you can see we're going to be grabbing our horizontal or vertical axis we also have a string called motion name so inside your animator whatever your parameter was called we're going to be grabbing our direction and we're going to be grabbing our speed we also have a float called motion speed and this is going to be equal to a, a typical number of 1 or 0.5 okay now if we head down here we're going to see if we get our axis so we're going to be grabbing our axis name right so if it's our vertical and it's greater than zero then we're going to be setting our variables down here now if you want to go through these individually to find out what I did exactly uh, then you can but what essentially I did was simply I took my animation I took its value and then simply lerped it to the next value or reduced it to a lower value and of course if you just take a look at it you'll see exactly what we got okay so lastly we have our animation tab right here and as you can see all it is is just calling if we're sprinting it's going to be setting these variables to one on the other hand if we're not sprinting then we're going to be setting the variables to half of that so yeah pretty easy to do now if we head back over into unity and we're going to press play now as you know this is our new player it's not our old player uh, we can now walk forward walk backwards run forward run backwards and the script works perfectly now inside of our next tutorial we're going to be setting up our camera camera script uh, allowing us to be able to create a third person camera that rotates around the ca character and we're also going to be able to uh, basically change the character's direction whenever we move so that should be quite fun I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did make sure to leave a like subscribe check out some of my other videos and of course I'll see you guys next time